Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the factory fitted stereo on this Audi A2 and I'm going to give you a brief overview of what you're going to need to fit an aftermarket stereo. So on this particular vehicle we are going with this double din Kenwood here, DMX125 DAB radio and uh, we're also going to be needing a fitting kit. So I'll just show you fitting kit. There's the fitting kit. It's CTKAU16-ISO for Audi A2. This is made by Connex2. I'll show you what comes in the pack. So in other words, when you've got your release keys clicked in, slightly two different variants I'm using here and release key, but it doesn't matter, they both do the same thing. Push them in until they click, put a rod through the keys, and then basically you're gonna spread them. So we're gonna pull them outwards, and you should hear it click. Sometimes there's a bit of a jiggle to get this work, but normally not too bad. Once you pop the thing forward, you will notice I've actually put a, like a, a rag, over the top of this and the reason for that is because the back of this radio is steel yeah so what you don't want is obviously this thing to get scratched you don't want your gear not getting scratched or anything else getting scratched so just cover it all over so that none of it gets damaged once removed from the dashboard you are greeted with three of these connectors yeah so you've got two that look roughly the same there squeezy tabs on the end you push them in so you squeeze and pull same with this one this one's got one on each side so squeeze both sides and pull and it will come out and then you've got two types of aerial connects normally. The normal one, yeah, which is a female one, and that's on there, and you just basically pull and it'll come off. And a FACRA one, as it's called, which is this one here. You squeeze the tab in and pull. We're gonna be using this aerial for when we put the new radio in. So now we've got that out, we could stash that safely to one side. Before you pull the power plug though, you might wanna check to see if you've got any CDs in it, because obviously it's gonna to be too late once you've uh, pulled the power from it. But let's move on and get some of this fitted, and I'll update you shortly. I'm just going to briefly go over a couple of points on Audis in general. Uh, this particular vehicle is a good example. So on your third plug here, this is actually for an amplifier in the vehicle. The vehicle's got an amp to run the rear speakers. So if we look at the front cable, this is the adapter that I was on about that uh, comes with the car. The front cable's only got front speaker wires. These are fronts, yeah? The ones on the end that haven't got any wire coming out, they will be rears on a normal version, yeah? So there's any basically four cables in there look whereas normally you'd have eight if the vehicle was not amplified so if the vehicle had no amp you'd have eight cables and they'd run the rear speakers but because it's amplified you get this cable in the packs that you're going to buy okay so we're going to plug that in there yeah and then you use these phono plugs you use rca plugs to plug in the back of your rear out on the back of the radio and we'll show you this shortly when i've actually got the radio plumbed in but i thought i'd point out why you get this extra cable and basically why you've only got four cables there instead of eight. On a non-amplified car, you'd have the plug, plug fully populated, you'd have eight wires in there, and you'd have eight wires coming out of here as well. You'd have a couple of purples and a couple of greens coming out as well for the rear speakers. This one, amplified, so you get this bit of kit. Hopefully that explains it for you. The blue wire, by the way, is to switch the Audi amplifier on and off with the ignition, with the radio coming on and off. So obviously you don't want the amplifier on all the time. Okay, moving on. This radio being a DAB radio, we are going to have some brand or another of DAB aerial. This is a window screen one. It sticks on the window. You only see this black block. I mean, this bit sort of see through. This bit sticks to the A pillar to bare metal. So in other words, you scrape a bit of paint off on your A pillar, make that attached to it. And then you've got your cable, which you run down your A pillar and bring it out the radio hole in the dashboard. Radio in question, I was just going to mention these RCA outputs again for you just to make this completely clear. So in other words, when you've plugged in your uh, you've plugged in your cable, yeah, so there's your cable and you've got these two. You go to the back of your radio, yeah, and you want basically um, rear out. So there's rear out, white and red, and you plug the corresponding white and red plugs from your adapter into these two. I will show you this fully plugged into the vehicle so you can see what I'm on about. This particular radio has got a, a USB cable to run down the car as well. You can put that in the glove box or in the centre console if your radio's got one. It's just somewhere to stick a USB stick should you want to, or to charge your phone maybe, you know, or maybe to run Spotify through the USB, that type of thing. Okay, we're going to get the uh, aerial put up and everything hanging out the dashboard so you can see where everything plugs in. Right guys, we're at the wiring point, so I thought I'd uh, cut in here and show you some bits and bobs. We've got the 
stereos and the new stereos microphone connected here that's up by the rear view mirror of the vehicle we've got our amplifier adapter plugged in the rear out there on the back of the radio this radio has got a screen so it has an earth cable that's meant to connect to the handbrake okay so in other words you can only have the screen on when the handbrake and the, is on and the car is stationary the owner of this vehicle has requested that that's bypassed it's quite a common thing normally people do ask for this to be bypassed so all you've got to do with that is basically splice it into the earth connection so there we have the earth cable to the radio connect this to earth and the screen will work all the time as you want it to now please in the comments no you know no questions on the ethics of that I basically am an installer of electrical products. I have nothing to do what's sold to the customer and nothing to do with any decisions. So, you know, person's asked for it to be done, it's done. Okay, we have a power cable here for the amp to switch the amplifier on and off, which is spliced into the blue wire. The blue wire is for electric aerial power or amplifier power. So it runs it quite well. All of these connections are gonna be loom taped up very shortly. So in other words, everything's plugged in on this particular radio. The other ones that you can see hanging around here, this one is the USB that I was on about that runs down the back and is going to pop out here. And we've got the aerial still to plug in, which plugs in over here, yeah, down there. On a lot of the Audis, the power from the ignition needs to be taken from the fuse box. So what you're going to do is get a multimeter, test for an auxiliary circuit, pull the fuse out, in this case the 20 that used to live there, and get yourself a doubler like this, a fuse spur. These are available off Amazon ebay that type of place and basically you pop it in and then you take your power cable to your radio here's the other end of the power cable that comes from the fuse box that i was just showing you and that's tapped into the yellow cable here so the yellow cable snipped away because there's no power on the block from a lot of these id cars and then it's connected to that so you've got an ignition switched live so in other words it goes on and off with the ignition of the vehicle you will have to test the fuses on your own fuse boxes, guys, because the specs do vary. So you need a multimeter or a test probe screwdriver to check which one goes on and off with the key. OK, let's put this in. And I will just mention um, the kit that's supplied with this only comes with single DIN fascia adapters. OK, so I haven't actually got the plastic frame to fill these gaps up at the side. Now, I have nothing to do with that. I install these things day in, day out, all electrical products. So... The supplier of the parts for this vehicle is going to have to get on that and order the correct trim to go around it for now i'm just going to pop it in yes there'll be a gap around it it's not right there's nothing i can do about that when you're out and about doing these fits you sort of improvise sometimes and that is literally what i'm doing now and there they are there's the finished article the radio in can't actually show it you're playing because obviously i'd get uh, a copyright strike on the channel but it's going to sound completely different anyway through your own speakers or through your phone whatever you're watching this video through but there should be a plastic fascia panel that goes round it the kit supply does only come with these which are single in fascia clips no good whatsoever but i'm sure i'll get this back at a later date to finish off and put the trim around it like i say unfortunately it's beyond my control i have nothing to do with the product or any of the bits and bobs that come with it. I'm just the fitter. And there you go. Hopefully this was helpful to anybody with an RDA too. If it was, give us a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching and bye for now.